I'm the director of the Radio Pharmaceutical Trial Group at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you very much for the opportunity to discuss the PSMA 4 study presented at ESMO 2023 in Madrid. This, I think, is a very important study that was conducted in Texane naive patients with metastatic CRPC. All of the patients had progressed despite having prior androgen deprivation therapy and an ARPI. Most commonly, the prior ARPI was abiraterone, but in many cases, it was insulutamide. Now, the patients were randomized after having confirmed PSMA PET positivity to either a second ARPI or PSMA 617, Lutetium 177. The primary endpoint was radiographic progression-free survival, and we had a variety of secondary endpoints. The primary endpoint was unequivocally positive. The hazard ratio as presented at ESMO was 0 0.43. The median RPFS for those on the PSMA lutetium group was 12.02 months. And in the control arm, the median was 5.59. So as you can see, more than a doubling in the RPFS, important. A variety of other secondary endpoints were used. There was a crossover adjusted overall survival and the reason we did the crossover adjusted is 84% of those who were eligible for crossover on the hormonal arm, when they progressed, could be eligible for the PSMA lutetium. And 84% of those patients who discontinued the ARPI as part of the protocol and had radiographic progression, in fact, crossed over to receive lutetium. Bottom line, the crossover adjusted has ratio for overall survival was 0 0.8, whereas the RPFS was statistically significant and the confidence intervals were tight and did not overlap one, the overall survival confidence intervals did overlap one because of the relatively small number of events. At the time of the trial analysis, 29% of the patients enrolled on the trial had passed away. Adverse events were favorable for the lutetium. In addition, a variety of secondary endpoints were favorable for the lutetium. PSA declines were 57% for lutetium, 20% for the hormone. There were improvements in health-related quality of life and the pain to pay, time to pain progression. And overall response rate was 50% in those patients who receive the lutetium. As you can see, the lutetium is highly active in this setting, has a lower risk of adverse events, met the primary endpoint RPFS, tumor shrinkage, and the PSA declines were better. Overall, I think it's a nice and positive trial. The safety profile of PSMA 617, Lutetium 177 was excellent. The grade three, four adverse events were lower with Lutetium as compared to the hormonal control arm. The severe adverse events were less common in those who received the Lutetium. In addition, the dose continuations because of problems were only 5% in the lutetium arm, the same as the hormonal arm, and dose adjustments were lower, only 3% in the lutetium arm as compared to 15% in the hormonal arm. Overall, there was an excellent safety profile, some mild dry mouth, some mild GI symptoms were noted, but overall, the therapy was well tolerated. We decided to use in the control arm a second ARPI instead of docetaxel 
because many people are not able to receive docetaxel or are unwilling to receive docetaxel. If we look within the United States, the most common uh, therapy used after progression on a first ARPI is in fact a secondary ARPI. I will say that docetaxel would be more active than a second ARPI, but it would also be more toxic. And here in this particular trial, the toxicity actually favored the lutetium and the second hormone was more toxic. I think if we had compared to docetaxel, the toxicity differences would have even been more stark and fewer patients would have been randomized because not everyone is willing to receive or capable of receiving docetaxel. I think there are several factors that feed into treatment choice. First of all, the choices may be broader than just the PSMA lutetium versus docetaxel. There are people who may be appropriate for PARP inhibitors, particularly if they have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. There may be a few patients who would be appropriate to receive a PD-1 inhibitor if they have an MSI high tumor or particularly high tumor mutational burden. I think that patients who are going to respond best to the lutetium have a higher PSMA PET uptake. We excluded patients with a low PSMA uptake. And I think if the patient had a low PSMA uptake, they would be ideal for receiving docetaxel. Taken together, there's more than one treatment choice. And in the end, we'll be looking at the various options and hoping to choose what's best for our patient at the particular time that they need therapy.